Right here we have once again, there's, there's Dooley. Oh no, there's Dooley. There's Dooley, there's me. Why are we indoors once again? Because it rained again in this lovely, lovely ground, the Hagley Oval. I don't, I can't remember if I've come here before, Dooley, but it is so beautiful. Mm. And the high camera was catching the surround so beautifully. What a pity that, what, what is the southerly? The southerly yeah, the cabin? southerly it's cabin. Cold. And the southerly is a cold one as well, Harsh. It's the one that, you know, obviously comes off the, uh, the Southern Ocean comes from Antarctica, works its way up and it got to about I, I, maybe I, I thought six Inver degrees. Cargill, Dunedin, <laughs> well, it, it's cold. a few of these places in between, ah, yes. Cold. Um, but I mean, look, it's a stunning ground. I haven't been back here for a couple of years and it, it's mm. looking fantastic. Just a, a real shame. The whole series has been marred. Yeah, we'll I, talk I about this yeah. game, but I get the feeling we never really got into the series, mm. did we? I mean, three T20 hours, one of those rained off, one tied on Duckworth yeah. Lewis, one uh, one game washed out in the ODIs. You never really got into the meat of the contest. And, and I don't feel we did as as, no. as commentators. You never felt like you were in it or, or there was moments in the series where, gee, the last game was exciting. I'm looking forward to this one because it just never really gained any momentum. And I, I think that was the real shame of it. I guess that's part and parcel of playing mm. cricket in New Zealand at this time of year. We saw the same thing in Australia, didn't we, for the T20 World Cup. Yeah. For a, a large part of that was affected by weather and we're just maybe going through a bad patch at the moment. I tell you what. Anyway, <laughs> Stephen Fleming was with us a little while ago and he said sometimes it just takes you time to get used to the conditions. Auckland was a different shape, Mount Monganui is a little bigger. Uh, here at the Hagley Oval, big ground, so it just takes a little bit of time getting used mm. to it. But let's talk about this game specifically. I don't think India got enough runs and it was apparent they were not going to get enough runs as they kept losing wickets and twice now, uh, Washington Sundar has bailed them out, if you could call getting to that total of bailout in the first place. But uh, Simon, he's done it in two different ways. Yeah. One game he knocks 37 of 16, one game he hangs in and gets a half century. Yeah. I've been mighty impressed. Seriously impressed with Washington Sundar. He, he strikes me as a guy who India have been waiting for. I mean, you always want Hardik Pandya fit. Yes. But if Hardik Pandya and Washington Sundar are fit and fit to bowl, and Jadeja comes back and he's fit to bowl, all of a sudden it's looking like, wow. You know, what could we have at five, six, seven, six, seven, eight, even? Yes. Um, which would be even better if they could have those three at six, seven, eight in any given side. So I've been so impressed with just his temperament. Yes. Um, his ability to leave the ball, which I think was a key thing today. Mm -hmm. In, in this, this third game, the key thing was leaving the ball alone. The ability to, to not play at every delivery, to play the line and not follow it because it was seeming around. It wasn't easy conditions, I'll say that. But if you allowed your opening combination or your top mm. order to get into the game and then kept wickets in hand at the back end, you would have been all right. It is di di different conditions. Sometimes you play in a place like Indoor or Nagpur, you get in straight away, you go boom, boom, mm. and you go straight towards 330, 340. It wasn't the case here. But what did India do wrong? Or more specifically, did New Zealand just have the right squad for the conditions? Well, squad was a big thing. We've talked about it all day, haven't we? And, and New Zealand left Michael Bracewell out after picking him in Hamilton and not and playing now, and not yeah. playing and India would have seen the conditions here and they should have found a way to get Shadol Thakur back into yes. the side some way shape or form he should have played ahead of Deepak Huda I, I'm yeah, guessing possible and that given them I mean he can bat or even ahead of Chahel ahead of who Chahel knows, who knows what yeah it, either 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 but they needed that fourth seam, yeah. seam bowling option and New Zealand proved that when Daryl Mitchell did such a great I job know. and they left Santner so deep in the innings you know if you look at traditionally strong Indian teams, there's always spin bowling, bowling options. In the days gone by, whether it was Yuvraj or Tendulkar or Seva, occasionally a bit of Seema from Ganguly. In the New Zealand side, the backup is always a Seema bowler. Someone like Daryl Mitchell, he, he was just perfect. I thought he understood the conditions really well. He bowled beautifully. I know just two over shot, but I think for all intents and purposes, New Zealand won this. And so we've got a similar series result again. India last time came here, won the T20s, lost the ODIs. This time won the T20s, lost the ODIs. And it allows you then just to look into the future and say, is ODI a concern area for India? Mm. It's a different side that's going to Bangladesh, uh, Julie, because uh, all, the, all the big guns come back. But suddenly there's no Sanju Samson again. Yeah. I would have loved to see a little bit of Sanju Samson yeah. uh, on this tour. But both the, wrist, both the wristies are gone. Mm -hmm. And most important for me is the one other big game for India in this series which was Shubhan Gill. Yeah. And Shubhan Gill is not going either. I, I was very impressed with what Shubhan did here. Yeah, yeah the two highlights have been Washington and, and Shubhan, Shubhan, to be honest. And, and I think Umran Malik will learn from, the, from mm -hmm. the tour as well. I'm going to give him a little pass mark. I know we gave him a, okay. a pass mark after his debut. And I'm just going to give him a pass mark because I think he will develop more. But absolutely, Shubhan Gill, he's forcing his spot. 
yeah. he's forcing his place at the top of that order. If I was Shubman Gill, I'd be very, very frustrated yeah. because I got a half century, got into 45, not out, it rained. Then mm. here, he, was, he struggled a bit, got two shots in out. Now, suddenly he doesn't have three games in, yeah. in Bangladesh. And when you're a young kid and you want to break in and be the number one or the number two choice, you can't just be sitting at home and watching someone else maybe strengthen their position. So I think India will have to already know 20, from which they come down to 15, 20, yeah. 21, 22, yeah. maybe at most, because now they've sent Rajat Patidar out to Bangladesh mm. and they rate Rajat Patidar very highly. He's had a very good uh, Vijay Hazare, Mushtaq Ali, he's been in good form. And Rahul Tripathi goes out now. Yeah. Both of us like Rahul Tripathi very much in T20 cricket. But is he a serious contender for yeah. the World Cups? For the World I mean, Cup? I know they love Roger Patidar and, and, and yeah. I look at it and I think, okay, that's fine. But there, there is a, a plethora of batters that, you know, Sanju's good enough to play and he, yes. they're leaving him out. Uh, why are they taking Roger Patidar? I mean, I, I mean, I know there's there's other openers. We've just seen um, the, the young man from Chennai score a bulk of runs in the last week yeah. and a half, haven't we? So, um, look, there, there's plenty of players. Uh, Tripathi, for me, again, great. Love him. Love him to bits. He, he does things yeah, that we just don't expect at times. But is he in the best 20 players in India in one day international cricket? I'm not sure. Mm. I'm not sure. Maybe they're just giving it a go, giving it a, a, a chance. But there are there are gaps. There are gaps for them to fill. The wicketkeeping one is still a concern. Final thought about this mini, mini tour, really, <laughs> mini tour. I don't know that India have found the answers. Mm. I, I, I wonder if they found the answers. To me, they will look. They came here looking for some answers, and I don't think they've walked away or, or flown away um, with any more answers than they than they came here with because of the lack of game time and the lack of cricket that was played and the weather that that sort of played its part. They know now Shubman can play in different conditions at the top of the order. They know they've got yeah. someone there if they want someone. They know that Washington Sundar is back fit, and if he's fit, he can play a key role. Outside of that, I'm not too sure what else they found out. They still know that Shik has got ability. Yeah. Um, what else did they find out? Umar Malik has got mm. potential. Ashdeep is good enough yeah. to be in the starting lineup. I still Outside think he needs that, to be in different situations yet. He's, yeah. he's still so young, remember? Yep. But so I think I'd like to see Ashdeep play a lot more. Mm. The more he plays, the more different situations he finds himself in. Yep. For me, Dooley, what did we take out of this tour? Some great sights, yeah. <laughs> a lot of fun, yeah. but not as much cricket as we'd like to. So, so and, there. And you Harsh is going home with a few more warm clothes and three, <laughs> two more jackets. I think two more jackets, some warm clothes, and some some it rather was, damp memories. It, it, it was cold. It was a month and a half. Australia was cold, but New Zealand was gorgeous. But we just didn't get uh, didn't get enough cricket. So there we are, Dooley and me. Enjoyed bringing this to you from New Zealand. And hopefully, next time we come back to New Zealand, it'll be nice and warm in January and February, and we'll have a lot more cricket for you.